Hello and welcome to Let's Be Real. We're going to be talking about the latest trends and the latest topics in the news that everyone is talking about. So sit back and relax. It's going to be super entertaining. But before we start, we want to say a huge thank you to Thailand Carpet for this beautiful set. I love this color for the couch. And obviously to Savantha Wines. We're having oh, a beautiful wine today. So, uh, do you want to say anything about it quickly? Yes, okay. uh, we are having the rosé. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Uh, the rosé, the grape is Bopal grape. Mm. It's a Spanish wine uh, with a local brand. This is Samantha's bridal. So I hope all of you yeah. Absolutely. are going to get <laughs> it. It's available everywhere. Yes, it's, wow, it's amazing. Um, so I'm Melissa. I'm going to be the host as I'm joined with my other co-host. I'm an actor and a presenter and a mommy. Uh, so why don't we start with our OGs, the people who are always here. Melvin, do you want to take it away and introduce yourself? I am my, my name is Melvin Alusa, and I am a professional actor, MC, content creator, yeah, a leading man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dr. C? Leading man. <laughs> um, I'm Dr. C. A lot of people know me as Dr. Catherine Masitsa. I am a winemaker. A test maker. I help people navigate life's, um, celebrate and navigate life's greatest moments. And I'm an educator. We we teach event planners. Yay. You know, I've never mentioned that. I know. We do have a school where yes. we teach oh. event and wedding planners. Oh. Yes. You have Lovely. to learn these things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm. CEO? Yes, Charles Otieno, the CEO. <laughs> a media practitioner. And many other things. <laughs> <laughs> and as you guys can see on set, we're not four, but five. We have a co-host who's joining us today. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead. My name is Edward Nyanaro. I'm a voice and a screen actor, a commercial model, as well as a corporate MC and a founder, casting director at 254 Talent Management. Whew. So everything in entertainment he does. All right. Yes. And he's very good at what he does. So, as we drink our wines, I'm so excited to be drinking this wine. Uh, Melvin, do you want to start us off with our first topic? Definitely. The hottest topic this past uh, few days has been uh, mm. a shambolic, prosperous, <laughs> ridiculous um, event that's been happening in this country and everyone knows about it. Shakahola. Mm. Shakahola, uh, the Shakahola massacre that has been led by one pastor in this case, because for me pastor is something else, but pastor, uh, Paul McKenzie, where we have, I mean, we all know about it. He's, he's, uh, he has an 800 acre plot in uh, Kelifi. He's been indoctrinating people. Uh, and now eventually, you know, it's happening. People are killing themselves, starving themselves to death. Because this, this is starvation. Even mm. Jesus Christ fasted for only 40 days. And medically, you may prove me right, uh, doctor, the human body can only contain lack of food for 40 days. So how do you, you know, before it goes into starvation, uh, uh, starvation mode and then, of course, death? Mm. So these people, when you look at them, even the ones that have been interviewed, they are definitely under some kind of spell. Mm. You know, they are confused. They are, you know, they are the ones who have been rescued. And... And the families, uh, you know, you know, the families are distraught. They're in pain. It's just crazy, you know. Yeah. So I would like us to talk about that. You know, what do you guys think about, uh, the, the, you know, the entire sh 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 you know, Shakaola? My opinion is, it's a, it's definitely a cult, and it's a horrific cult, mm. to say the least. It's despicable. Yeah, Edward, do you want to start us off? Is sure thing. Know? Um, I I would say um. We've been asking ourselves who's to blame, right? Yeah. Uh, because this has been happening for quite a while. And uh, one thing is for sure, the authorities were notified back in the day before it got to this position. Oh. And when that happened, uh, when a couple of uh, those people who are either in the, those who are in the sect, in, in the cult, mm. uh, reported to the police. But the police were very complacent to do anything. Oh. And uh, when people started going missing, they still didn't... They didn't do anything, which also talks about the complacency of the authorities when we need them to act mm, in, in good moment, time, yeah. you know, because 
if someone took their time and went in at that particular moment, we would have saved a lot of lives, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And also the court system where cases take a long time. Uh, this guy has been convicted. Um, he's been caught before, he's been on, in court uh, 2017. Uh, on some of this abduction of kids, like 43 kids, he's wow. been uh, released before. So there's also a lack of uh, good follow-up in the court system, mm. which we need to really uh, look into because if we let lose people who can thereafter cause yeah. us lives, yeah. um, it also speaks to corruption yeah. um, in, the, in the court system. So uh, we are also to blame because one thing I was surprised that we have a lot of people who are learned who quit their jobs, sold their land, and followed this man. Um, where does your faith start and where does your wisdom kick in? Mm, we need okay. to be able to design, yeah. to be able to know this is right from this is wrong and question authority. Yeah. You don't always have to follow what someone tells you, mm. uh, regardless of the fact that they are in a position of authority. Um, yeah. It was sad. Yeah, I see Dr. C nodding your head a lot. What are your thoughts on this? Well, <clears throat> my thoughts are that uh, I think Kenyans, it's an eye-opener for a lot of Kenyans. Um, my mind immediately goes to, there was a story, but regarding a different um, other preacher, man of God, mm. apparently, who completely mystified this lady on, uh, she had a property on Riverside Drive, mm. and um, somehow they took her in, put her on drugs, and before she knew it, she completely, and there was somebody who was specifically to make her tea mm. and drug her, drug her, drug her. And she lost all her properties. Oh, wow. Yes, you, you know this story. Uh, and finally, by the time um, even the family was discovering and they took her separately, and now she started to gain her senses and all that, that story was just swept under the carpet. We don't even know what happened. Nobody has ever revisited it. Mm. Okay? And by nobody, I mean, like, perhaps uh, mainstream media. Yes. Yeah? Has never actually revisited this what story, happened. Yeah. what happened, so that we see where it actually is going to. And I'm thinking, you know, these prosperity, preaching, and all that, mm. in so many uh, continents, for example, even like Europe, some of these things are banned. Mm. Because Europe went through that dark age yeah. of... Um, when people would be banned, even Britain, by the time everybody became sober, like these adios, you're making noise pollution for who? Preaching what? Mm. Yeah, you go and uh, you're contained there. So, so some of these, uh, and, and I'm seeing Christianity and religion is actually reaching there because how do you bamboos all these people? Yeah. But the other thing I'm observing, there is organ trade, organ, 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 you know, there's a big br trade worldwide yeah. about mm. the sale of organs. Mm. You get abducted. So I'm, I'm also beginning to think perhaps all these people are taken in, their organs are harvested and sold, yeah. and then they are under the pretext of they are starving mm. and starving and starving themselves. So there are so many things mm. yeah. that this thing must be investigated. Yeah. Mm. But Kenyans, I hope Kenyans are opening are their eyes. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a Christian, Jesus Christ said it is finished mm. nobody comes to okay to the my father except, except by through me, me. Yeah. you don't mm. need anyone yeah. yeah you just pray okay see you directly mm. any quick uh, words on it i, I think the shakahola first of all where is shakahola shakahola is uh, when you go to malindi you pass malindi you pass cliffy mm. you go past cliffy town it's between it's somewhere in between uh, tana river and uh, Malindi and, and, and Kalifi town. Mm. It's very far. Mm. So Shakahola, the whole case is that uh, we are mixing two issues. One is that religion and state. Mm -hmm. That's why we are secular state. And Kenyans need to know that uh, it doesn't matter how religious you are. You cannot get prosperity through religion. It is your acumen, it is your business mind to mind. Mm -hmm. That's why Buddhists who are in Asia and all that are rich. They're not Christians. Mm. So Kenyans have to know that what they are looking in prosperity gospel, mm. 
Yeah. And I'm talking as a believer. Mm. Even Muslims are rich. Even non-Christians, yeah. even pagans yeah. have so. money. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So when they are being bamboozled, because prosperity gospel is not bad. What mm. is bad is there are some elements who are like Pastor Mackenzie who come and tell you, yeah. mm. don't go to school. How will you emancipate your mind? Yeah. Sell your things. Mm. Move on to this. What we learned through this thing is that um, the teachings were not right. Yeah, and uh, there were very wrong teachings. But my problem is not Pastor Mackenzie. My problem is the state. Yeah. When you have a state which believes that religion is what they are prop propping up every day, mm. then people will lose it because they think being on the side of religion is what makes people succeed. Okay. So Kenyans have really taken, you remember from 2013, when the Jubilee came to power, they told us, see, ma see Uchawi ni Maombi. Yeah. So these slogans have gone to the people. So people yeah. think that everything you need, you just pray. Yeah, and you okay. pray through a father or a pastor somewhere. Mm. So they do not pray for themselves. So okay. Mackenzie yeah. speaks that thing yeah. and hypnotized very many people. And there are very many cults in Kenya. Yeah. Okay. So this is just an eye-opener. But my, my problem is where was NSIS? Yeah, mm -hmm. where was the government? Yeah. And actually talking about where was the government, yes. I also want to talk about something else that's been on Twitter and in the media. There's a very disturbing video going around. May I have not watched it, I've refused. Um, but it's a story of a mother who um, fell out with the father of her child. I think it's in Kitengala. Mm -hmm. And her child was two years old. And she, even just to say it, so she pretty much, she killed the child and she was like eating like the child's organs and things like that. And I think a lot of people would ask the question, like, where was, where was everyone? Where was the community? Where was the government? As in like, how could it get to the point where this is happening? <coughs> what is, what is going on? Because personally, me, I know a lot of people are going to say it's mental health, mental health. Me, there are some things me, I'm just like, that's just demonic. Which is almost what I would say even for the story we just covered. I'm just like, that's just demonic. You can't tell me that's mental health. I refuse that one. Um, but Dr. C, what, what do you think about that whole situation? Uh, I suppose for me, um, when a mother, as a mother, because I, I am a mother. Yeah. And I see, I know how it feels to be a mother. Nature is there the to natural help instinct. you. Yeah. The natural instinct to protect your body changes, your mm. mind changes to protect your child. Mm. So when you find a woman uh, doing something else, I would not, I would put it like 90% mental health. Mm. I think so. I don't know. You know, our mental health laws are really different. Yeah. I don't know whether this girl belongs to the jail or she actually belongs into in a mental institution I they need to i think we'll have to wait mm. for her mental status to be checked before we can make any let me Convictions say about her, yeah. careless yeah. comments because i think so that we women must be encouraged mm. to speak out postpartum depression mm. is a major thing i know women who've had postpartum depression they never heal, and they've gone on to completely, completely not even go back. Yeah. I, I know personally I have friends mm. who, you know, they were pregnant nicely. Their life is going on well. Mm. It is not even out of luck. Their husbands are in their lives. They love them. But they're just not okay. They've never been okay. okay. And yeah. we've seen many celebrities actually coming up and saying, you know yeah. what, I've had... Was it uh, Kambua <coughs> the other day I saw? Mm. She spoke. She had postpartum depression. Yeah. So these are things that need to be educated. Women need to know if you're feeling low after yeah. having a child, yeah. even after two years, speak to somebody. Okay. So mm. Melvin, she's talking a lot about having empathy, especially for people who are dealing with mental health and mothers in postpartum. Um, do you think that we should be having empathy in all these situations of mental health where people are killing people or doing these atrocious things? Or do you think, yo, you murdered someone, you shouldn't have any empathy for you? Sorry. After watching that video, number one, I... Uh, you watched it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, to the end. So forbid, the end. Yeah. Uh, I'm a father as well. Yeah. You know, mother, my father. Mm. But I think where where, where where a child is concerned, um, there's very there's a thin line really between mother and father. Because 
your the way you express it as a mom mm. and the way you express it as a dad may be different but mm -hmm. the core yeah the, core, the, the instinct of the, protection the in, and yeah, all. the yeah. instinct of protection the core emotion mm. is the same yeah. just differently expressed yeah. masculine mm. or feminine however um i th i think judging by the video and the way the neighbors were coming through so first of all they had a scream and they came for me it tells me perhaps the child had been going through this sort of torture, torture. For, for a while because they, they, they had scream. when you hear a scream at a neighbor at a neighbor's house for the first time maybe you yeah. necessarily go uh, yeah, especially if it's a kid yeah. Uh, yeah it's a kid kids scream all the time yeah but maybe this had been happening for some time so they came this time around because the scream was becoming weird yeah Found the woman naked, uh, okay, the lady naked, lady whatever. But if you stab a child a hundred times, one hundred times, and then you go ahead and open her entrails and mental health. Yes, I think part of it may have been mental. Yes. But part of it also is deep-seated human wickedness because I think nowadays the. The, the amazing thing we want to uh, to to to, to uh, the the overall want to wear the blanket is, you know is mental I'm health. mentally unstable oh I'm depressed and all this postpartum how come this yeah. postpartum the world is what it is women have been we have seven billion human beings yeah so 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 do you tell me and like in Kenya in the world every day there's two hundred thousand babies being born every day so are there two hundred thousand cases of postpartum all all the time there has to be a solution therefore I yeah. mean. You can't tell me that God has given us something as beautiful as a child and not given us a mechanism mm. of how to deal with postpartum. If you yeah. take postpartum to the point of where I saw that child being killed, that is now you have entered... <laughs> you're excusing too much. Yeah, you're excusing too much. You're now, you've now become wicked. And yeah. Basically, you, you, you're expressing your wickedness. I, I believe, Dr. C, it's a combination of maybe postpartum, like you're saying, I agree, but also that woman's wickedness was also expressed through that. Number two, this thing of I've been dumped, I've been uh, left, and now I'm taking it out. Can we accept and move on? Umewachwa, umewachwa. You know, I've been in a situation that uh, there was a relationship, I've been left. Can we just accept this thing? Because it came from the, uh, the, the fact the that... The man leaving. Yeah, the man leaving. Mm -hmm. So, okay. me, wickedness, mental health. Yeah. Uh... CEO, do you have a quick word about it? I think, I think uh, Melvin has really prosecuted it well. Yeah. Th in, mm. in this country, mm. there is no way, traditionally, these things never used to happen because of support system. You, when you're giving mm. birth, there are very many people around you yeah. who would help you and mm. all that. This postpartum thing, we are saying, is very westernized now in African mm. culture. Yeah. From a lack of community. I guess. Yes, because yeah. Africans were meant to be like... They knew when you're having a baby, there were many people who would come, all this, yeah, and support, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot of support. Mm. But for me, that was purely madness. Mm. It is not acceptable for someone to do that to mm. a kid. Yeah. Yeah, mm. madness. Okay, um, Edward, maybe finish us off on the topic. What do you think? Are you a parent? No, I'm not a parent. Okay, but, but you've I, been in relationships uh, yeah. and maybe you've been left or you've left someone. So what, what do you think about that situation, um, the way she handled being left? I feel, okay, because I also thought about probably she's been left. A lot of times we've had uh, situations where um, even men take it away, uh, take it on the kids to like do away with them and then kill themselves. We've yes, had situations yes, yes, like yes. those before. Yeah. And um, in this particular case, we, we don't really know what, what really happened. happened. Yeah. However, there's no excuse of cutting up your baby and eating them mm. in, in any case. Um, there's PTSD, right? Um, it usually takes like two to two days to two weeks mm -hmm. in the beginning, mm. but it can get worse uh, where the mother feels like they do not love the child um, uh, the way they should be loved. They feel like uh, there's uh, isolation, irritability. They feel there's so many things that yeah. go on through the mental state of the mother at that particular moment that can, they can be able to do things that would normally Never not happen, happen. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. uh, despite the fact that the mother has a motherly instinct, then mm -hmm. it's not there when someone is suffering in that, in, in that sense. But it, it was a very disturbing video. I just watched it in, um, with the, not 
no Not clear clarity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't think I could have stomached it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think we've all kind of talked about it. Maybe mm. there's mental health. Maybe there's madness. Mm. But there's no excuse. I think is is what we're mm. saying at the end of the yeah. day. There's no excuse. Um, Doctor C, do you want to take us to our next topic? Hey. Yes. So something a little bit lighter than that. <laughs> than the suffering. No, this is children. not lighter. Oh, no. In fact, <laughs> oh, no. in fact, what I'm about to talk about uh, could be the one that is causing people frustrations until they're just oh, eating no. eating others. Uh huh. Because we need to deal with these debt. I want to talk about the debt repayment hey, yeah, yeah the economy crisis. the state of the economy mm. so in one of the local dailies uh there was the headline the debt payment surpassed the running costs yeah i mean unless you live under a big rock in kenya you must know that we have uh, <laughs> it's been reported everywhere and where there is smoke there is fire yeah. so everybody we know that uh, we are having debt problems and for the first time, apparently, the debt repayments surpassed our expenditures. So I'm just going to read here to get the number straight. So apparently, um, in the last, uh, uh, f the current financial year, we are looking at, we spend as a, uh, as a country, 815.35 billion on debt repayments mm. between July 2022 and March, which is up from 740. And uh, now we also spend in terms of, um, this is what was the debt repayment. And on expenditure, we were at 814.47. Wow. So it means we are, our expending, the, what, what we are spending to pay locally, we are paying more. Yeah. And everybody knows if you've ever had a loan, you've taken a loan, and uh, you have to pay much more. I think that's the, the only way we can simplify also for people to yes, understand. Yeah. That what you're actually paying for your loans yeah. is really surpassing in terms of what you can really spend. And I think this is a big problem. So my personal um, remarks are that we are really in a danger zone. Already there was a bond mm. that was undersubscribed. I hear we are about to float another euro bond. Mm. Euro bond? Yes, we have a bond coming. Yes, it's, it's coming. And people may just shy away. Why would you put good money after bad money? Mm. Do you know, like, <laughs> if you're going to be paid? Yeah. I don't know what you guys think. I think for me, I just, uh, I'm not very, I'm not a financial expert. Mm. But I just speak as a Kenyan that is in another sector, not, uh, but of course this affects everyone. My, the, the question that comes to, to my mind is, Kenya has been paying debt since 1963, I think. Mm. We have been in debt all through. Always, yeah. And our debts have been, there's no government that has come in that has found the debt repayment at the same place it was as the, Before. the, uh, as the other one. Mm -hmm. The percentage is keep, because the dollar, things keep changing mm. and it's always getting you know, uh, was was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it with the current government that is so unique? Mm. So How it's just come, a problem, yeah. What is it with this specific government that, that this debt issue has become such a, a big thing? A big thing that is affecting Unga at the mm. kiosk mm. at this point. Kibaki came in and there was debt. We managed. Uh, when Uru came in, of course, there was, you know, there was more. So for the question I'm asking or I'm thinking as a Kenyan is, what is different with this specific one? That we're that feeling it. it that, that, they really are, feeling that, it. that it has become, oh, by the way, you should know that we're in debt. I've had this thing of, about <laughs> debt since, uh, you know, since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. We are in debt, we are in debt. We, uh, we even used to make jokes about it that every Kenyan owes 20,000 uh, 20, to uh, IMF, 20,000 to I don't know who. Mm -hmm. What's going on, really? Honestly. Yeah, I think for me, as in, first of all, I think the increase in the stand, in the cost of living, that's just not a Kenyan problem alone. I think mm. our world's everywhere. I think every country is complaining about this. All the citizens are complaining about the increasing cost of living. And there are a couple of factors that are leading to that. So I don't think that our debt problem is the only reason for the increase in standard of living. I think, for, okay, for me, like I, I haven't researched the debt problem in, in depth. But I just keep thinking, if corruption was not in this country to the levels that it is, would we be in this problem? 
right now. Because yes, as in like, uh, and it's not to say that there's no benefit to these loans that we keep getting. Uh, you see a lot of in infrastructure that's come from it. But I just think so much is wasted in corruption, yeah. as in like we could have paid yeah. off so much of these debts if it yeah. wasn't for corruption. So I just, I, I, uh, it's, it's a dream. It's a dream of where our country would right, be. Although that being said, it's not like there's no corruption. There's no country in the world where there's no corruption. Um, but where, where we would be. CEO, what do you think about this? Now, um, I think I'm a student of economics. Perfect. Let me Tell put us. it correct. Mm. What you've just read is that uh, that was until March. Our debt repayment currently stands at 930 billion. That's 930 billion. Oh my gosh. Going forward. Next year's loan repayment, Kenya, is 1.2 trillion. Next year. Okay. Next year. We are one step away from defaulting on our loans. And this is what Kenyans should know that we should not be masking these it's things. It's a dire thing. Mm. We have a problem here, and yeah. it's a massive, massive problem. Mm. Our KRA collections is below budget. On March this year, we sub the, there was a euro bond, a medium euro bond, which was floated in, uh, actually in this April. The subscription was 24%. The people who up took it is 6%. We hope to raise 30 million so that we can run this month. We raised 1.7 mm. million. Our KRA collections for the quarter was even lower than that. So what, what am I speaking out? I'm saying that for you to survive as a country, remember that you collect your revenue. The first thing you do is you collect your taxes. The taxes we are collecting, this year's budget is one trillion budget. Our budget for mm -hmm. this year, which is next, in, uh, next month or in um, June when we are reading the budget. Mm. So it means that you have to borrow money. Again, you have to go to borrow money. And I hear a lot of Kenya Kwanza talking a lot on things they don't even understand. Mm. And people are lying, they're bamboozled by these facts. The fact is that we're in a danger zone mm. and we, have, we cannot actually honor our debt. So what can we do? The only thing to do is that we have to borrow. Next month, President William Ruto has to go to IMF. They have to borrow 200, million, 200 billion so that we can plug and pay our debt and also pay. So the what's the solution? Then? Our solution our is solution that we that. have to expand our tax base. Mm. Okay. We have to, to expand our tax base. Mm. We have to bring more people who don't pay tax into to that tax, tax market. market. President Ruto has to go to the international market and restructure our loans. Mm. That is the only way to okay. survive. If they were supposed to be paid in 10 years, let's say we pay them in 20 years. Tell them we cannot. Our loan ceiling, our, we are hoping that next year, our budget next year will be 2.7 trillion, our collections. Mm. But remember we are paying 2 point, we'll pay 1.2 trillion in, in, in our debts. Because there are loans which are maturing yeah. next year, which takes it to... Currently, when you are reading, it was until March. Now our loans are matured. There's a loan which matured around 30, 40 billion this month, which we started repaying, so it moved to, th to 930. So what I'm trying to say is that they are saying you don't borrow money to pay people. That's yeah. why people are not being paid. The money, when you take it, it's like your account. You take it consolidated. Mm. Yeah? Okay. That's why counties have not gotten. You have to count 300 billion which counties get every year. Okay. You add, your budget is 1.1 point, 1 point 1 billion. So that's uh, 1 trillion. You look at that amount of money, you realize that yeah. Kenya actually is one step from default. Default. Internationally. What, okay. So what, what do you think, Edward? One or two words as we close up this topic? Uh, one or two words is we didn't get here just now, uh, it didn't just happen. Mm. Um, in the previous regime, we had more borrowing than ever, yeah. and uh, which has gotten us here. And also, we have a situation where our priorities as a country or in government are really messed up, yeah. where when we are struggling in this kind of a situation, we have CAS being appointed, and salaries. there are salaries of very few people which can actually sort out a lot of mess Issues. that is going on, yeah. like the doctors, you know. But when the government cannot be able to even pay their people, their people like just salaries, 
and we are in this kind of a debt situation where for every 100 shillings, 80 bob is going towards debt repayment, then you wonder how do, from the collections, we are going with the negatives. How is it that we can be able to then, there's less development that mm. is going to, to happen. Um, the economy is not going to grow. Okay. Because you're not going to feed the economy mm. because we are always just paying debt. So that's that's really my opinion. Oh, so it's dire. <laughs> We're in a dire situation. People pay tax, please. But my thing Let's would not be, default. Pay tax. My one tip would be quickly. Quickly. Edward said the the previous regime, you know, but I would say there's no previous regime. The They're regime, all the same people. The regime that was there uh, yeah. last this, is. Yeah. This is a continuation of the, no. of the same regime. What you need to tell him is that, Edward, a government is a going concern. Is that? Yeah. A going concern. Yeah. Okay. It is not you stop and you move. I get okay, it. Okay, we're going to continue. Because we're going to continue. We're going to continue. Just one, yeah. one word for the ladies. Yeah. You know, we are overpowered. <laughs> yeah. That's why I have always been an advocate of, we cannot afford every five years to be going to elections yeah. We need someone to have a tenure or oh, even yes. I know, because every issues. time you have what? somebody new as a business person, our business always stops. We tread like for two years. The rest of the other time people are politicking and then the other year people are voting. Yeah. Then we, okay. we do business for one or two years. That's why the country is not able to okay. collect enough tax. Yeah. So therefore I'm thinking there was that thing we were meant to sign. I don't know what it was, some politics, something mm. people shot it down. We actually need to have presidency that goes on like for 15 what? or no, 20 no, no, years. No, no, okay, years. okay. Because because we cannot yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a marriage. No, no, no. Okay, we're going to no. continue then over the break. You're married no. for two years, you move with the next yeah. husband or what? Okay, yeah. we're going to continue over the break because yeah. I don't think that's a big one. Yeah. Edward, we have to break, go with the universal year old marriage. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So yeah. We're going to go on a short commercial break and uh, when we come back, we're going to have more enlightening conversations and you don't want to miss that. Welcome back. It has been very interesting conversations. Let's be real. We are going into the second segment of this show with more intriguing and interesting and even more hilarious conversations. And I'll start you off, yes. ladies and gentlemen. The Sudan crisis. Oh, it's not getting lighter yet. <laughs> the Sudan. You, from the debt, let's move to Sudan. Hey, this hey, hey. Here. Yeah. Sudan, as a country, has had 35 coup and coup attempts mm. in the last... Uh, since 1956. They 35. got independence in 1956. Wow. Yes. It is the only country in Africa which had had coup attempts, coup and coup attempts. Six have been successful. Wow. The rest have been either foiled, stopped, gone halfway. It has been crazy. Mm. RSF, RSF is a rapid uh, force which is led by Hemeti and then there's a, the, the Sudanese army. So these two gentlemen led by Burhan, they have been fighting for the control of that nation. And I have my thoughts, but I'll allow you guys to speak first. So for, uh, for me, first of all, I would say, for, uh, from the way I understand it, is that uh, there was that, uh, before Bashir was uh, you know, deposed, mm -hmm. there was uh, a civilian outcry, a public outcry, where they wanted him out for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that happened, and now the government went to it was a transitional was meant to be a transitional government that has been given to the army mm -hmm. and then goes back to civilian rule that was the agreement mm -hmm. but in true african fashion small power or rather in this case big power mm -hmm. but small in the case of where they are even sudan yeah, they, they, they have twisted power they are in there now the army doesn't want to move out now our rsf as you uh, as uh, it's rsf right mm -hmm. are saying That's guys you have stayed here for too long Honestly, why, 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 why is the army fighting and there was an agreement? Mm. Give power back to civilians. I mean, there's very few nowadays, uh, few military or police states. Yeah. The, the countries are run but by civilians. And both sides, the military? The, uh, yes, the military. Yeah, both the of them are yeah, military, but, so, so but, whatever, but, what's the difference? No, but, no, RSF is being powered by the civilians. Okay, so now on that, me, maybe these are rumors rumors in the rumor mill that i heard but i heard there was a bigger issue of something about the government had made a deal was it with russia 
for port or something mm -hmm. and the Western um, Americas <clears throat> or those countries were like, no, we can't allow for Russia to have this kind of a power A naval base. Yeah, yeah, they can't mm -hmm. have that kind of a base um, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So now they're funding this other side to now come and overthrow this government. Um, it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen these first world countries fighting us using by funding African militaries or armies or militias. Um, but uh, yeah, because I also think it's it's very it's very convenient how quiet they're being. The West is being pretty quiet, but mm -hmm. you know when it comes to Ukraine, mm -hmm. they're loud. <laughs> we'll we'll send armies, we'll send money, we'll do all these things. Oh my gosh, it must be in the top of the news of CNN, BBC, everywhere. <laughs> Sudan, <laughs> wapi, nowhere. <laughs> Doctor C, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for me, the story of Sudan, it's very sad because it reminds me of the story of the Congo. Yes. Because Sudan is one of the biggest, largest, richest African countries. Yeah. yeah. And who wants peace? Who is interested in peace in Sudan? Mm. Yeah, if it is not the north, it's the south. So there is that. Mm. But I think so that the idea of the civilians powering these, um, this fight yeah. could be true. Because even just even talking of the south and Sudan itself, the disparities in wealth, because... As you know, I'm a luxury connoisseur. connoisseur. Yes. So it means I deal with all the rich Sudanese. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. At the point of when they really need to spend, whether mm. they are north or south. So there's quite a bit of event well, planners from Kenya who go to Sudan. Yeah. North and sometimes even in south. Yeah? To do these big events. These people are, the people who are filthy rich are rich. Yeah. Like you don't, like you cannot, it's unbelievable. No yeah. Completely unbelievable. So there is, and I always see, I'm always feeling, of course it's gonna, the bottom is gonna rise. Yeah. And it could be one of those. And uh, whether or not, they, there are many theories. Mm. The, idea, the thing is that um, people are dying. People are having to leave their homes. Yeah. Uh, it's a nightmare there when it comes to humans. Mm. And we need to find, the world needs to find a solution. And this is why we always say we have to be each other's keeper because mm. America stopped, being pol stopped policing the world. And this is why you're all waiting for them to come and say, oh, you know, we all must go into Sudan. The world is tired. Africa needs to look, take care of its own business. I feel like the world has always been tired when it comes to Africa. Yeah, <laughs> what do you when think? When it comes to Africa, no, they're not tired. Rwanda, they were not tired. They were very tired. They were very tired. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they so should also be tired, tired of, 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 of ripping our resources. Our natural resources. Imagine, yeah. I wouldn't get tired of doing that. What I'm also thinking is the effects of that to how does that affect us as Kenya? You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of investment uh, there that Kenya has in the aviation, ICT sector, um, uh, name it. And also the peace and prosperity in our nation because we are bordering them. You know, if, if we do not intervene in a way yes. or whether or not we intervene, it's going to affect us. Mm. So uh, there's a lot that also Kenya has to lose if Sudan is not stable. Mm. That's one other thing that we need to put into consideration. And um, it's sad that Sudan has always been in this situation because I don't know whether there's any other African country that has that number of coups no. and that, you know, people mm. dying. It's and it's just, yeah. Yeah. it can be see. safeguarded. So I, I, I'll, I'll break it down a mm. bit mm. about uh, RSF and the army. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hemeti guy was... I want, uh, Buruhan used to be the leader, used to be the army commander of the western region. Western region is where Darfur is. Hemeti, who is now leading RSF, used to be a, cattle, uh, a, a camel trader. Camel traders have a lot of security. So Buruhan, who is the commander, who is fighting now with Hemeti, hired Hemeti to be his intelligence officer in Darfur. You remember that time Darfur had a problem with the guys who were feeling that they were left out in Bashir's government. So they started fighting the government. So what did Hemeti, uh, uh, Burhan do? He went and asked Hemeti and bankrolled Hemeti with his horsebacks. And Hemeti formed something we used to call the Janjaweed. That mm. means horsemen, a militia of horsemen on, uh, on, on, on horsebacks. Mm. 
there were 80, the first one. These guys really swept Darfur. They killed people. Mm. They really br brought that war on Darfur and killed very many people. After that, Burhan was promoted mm. to the central command of the army. That time, Bashir, who took power in 1986, through the help of the, the, the speaker, was known as Al-Turabi, decided that since he was fearing the army, he decided to bring the Janjaweed as a force, as a militia, okay. onto his side. Yeah. So there was a massive recruitment of Janjaweed, and they turned it to RSF. Hemeti, who used to be Burhan's spy, mm. was given the commander of that unit. Yes. You understand how this thing is moving? Mm. Yeah. So the guy becomes, and then Bashir realizes that the army might overthrow him. So he says RSF was to, con to be his safe house, to protect him. Yes. So he said they will, they'll join the army at a certain time. So the framework was made for them to join the army. In the meantime, RSF was used by the Bashir government to go into the war in Yemen. The Houthi rebels mm. were actually fought by the Sudanese RSF, and they were paid a lot of money. Who led that government, uh, that fight? Hemeti. Mm. Then the second, what you're talking about, the Western country being quiet. The Operation Boat, you remember a very long time, a few years ago, there was a lot of Africans trying to go to Europe mm. through the boat mm. from Western Sahara. Yes. He RSF was used and were given a lot of money by the Western powers mm. to stop the boat operation. So do you think they're being used by Western powers now? I'll, I'm coming to that. Mm. Yeah. So the Western, the, you've, have you had Af an African dying when they're trying to cross to, to uh, Spain anymore? Mm. It is these RFA guys who cleaned them. There's no boats crossing to Europe anymore. They were okay. paid for it. So this thing, it's like you are, you are, you are mm. feeding a monster. Yeah. So they became so big with lots of money, they decided they need to kick Bashir out, the person who was their ally. And they co-joined with the army, they kicked Bashir out. So the commander becomes the head of, the, they elected the government. The commander is who? Is is, is an army commander, Burhan. Mm. The deputy is Hemeti. The okay. RSF guy. Mm -hmm. Russia comes into the picture. Okay. Russia wants to set a naval base in the north at around 200 billion. Yeah. The Americans say no. And when Lavrov came, yeah. Lavrov is a minister for Russia, yeah. went there. Blinken calls and says, no, you can't go and set a naval base in Africa. So after that, from December, things start escalating because of what? U.S. Russia. U.S. Russia. And here we are. <laughs> so now, yeah. Hemeti and Burhan are in a fight. These are brothers who took over power together. Yeah. One thinks that the Russian naval base should be there, and one thinks the Americans should be there. That is the, the problem wow. we have in South Sudan. That's and the problem what, which yeah. has, in, in rule we always say, do not make a militia part of the national army. Yes. Do not make Janjaweed part of RSF and you bring them to the army. Even in Kenya, when we got independence, Kenyatta never agreed with Mau Mau joining the army. Yes. Because they'll mess. The problem we had in, in, Zam in Zimbabwe, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. That's, that's, thank you for giving us that, that context. Such a that's perspective. actually, yeah, that's mm -hmm. really you're, a, you're an expert, yeah. bro. And I actually yeah. want to pick on something, actually, Dr. C had said about mm. being, uh, and, and you had also pointed out, being your, um, kind of the, your brother's keeper mm. in terms of we should really care what's going on in the countries around us. And it actually takes us to our next topic, which is <laughs> something um, Mr. Mutua said on Twitter. He really wanted to be his brother's keeper. He wanted Kenya to be the brother's keeper of Haiti. Um, Haiti are dealing with a lot of insecurity and a lot of insecurity issues. A lot of international other countries um, have been willing to help in some way to support them gain their stability. Um, and Abu Mutua came out and said on Twitter, you know, may maybe we should take our police um, to Haiti to help them. Being our brother's keeper, what do you guys think? <laughs> as in, like, should we? As in, like, do we have police that we can spare to, to take to Haiti to help them with their insecurity? Amazing question. Do, yeah. Uh, first of all, do we... Do do we have police that we can spare? Because even <laughs> I think, number one, number one, I think our police uh, unit is even understaffed. If, if, I mean, if you ask me, there's one yes. police per, 
I don't know how many Kenyans. Some yeah. It should, be, a th it mm -hmm. should be 10,000. Mm -hmm. One yeah, police per 10,000 Kenyans. Yeah. And wow. you want to take the That's field. the ratio. Yeah so, so, yeah, so if you take police now to Haiti, that even goes up, maybe one police per 50,000 Kenyans. Yes. Our security situation in Kenya is one thing. Yes. From, 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 uh, from neighborhood gangsters. Yes. To I was just talking, you know, with, you know, with Edward, we have, uh, you know, we have bandits who are hanging <laughs> under cows and shooting and being all yeah. these kind of things. Yes. We are understaffed. Our policemen are, of course, you know, as as we all know, underpaid. For for the police, though, this would be an amazing opportunity for them to go to Haiti Make and money. then. You know, uh, the money would be crazy. <laughs> but as a country... We can't afford we, it. Look, we can't afford to take police anywhere. Not yeah. even Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Edward? Uh, when I saw that, I thought it was like... It was a joke. A joke, yeah. <laughs> and then I saw, oh, probably this is another Cobra Squad kind of thing coming up. <laughs> Cobra see, Squad? Yeah. That's hilarious. You know, because <laughs> how, how do we even think... We don't even share a border with Haiti. Mm. <laughs> uh, the UN... Uh, the UN um, security, the US is not even giving their people or their armies. Um, who's Kenya to come into in between all this with all the insecurities that are happening already in our country that we cannot yes. manage? How do we manage external? That's my perspective. Really. Even yeah, Dr. Dr. C, tell us. You're the one who's saying we should be our brother's <laughs> keepers. Yes. Should we support And Haiti? indeed we should be. Yes. So two things. Yes. First observation is that, um, you know, people, what a lot of people don't understand, mm. that there are two people in this world in power. Either the extra, extra super rich mm. are controlling the world, they're in leadership, it doesn't matter which part of the world you're in, mm. and or the drug lords are in power mm. and so the case of when you look at the countries like america who is in charge the super rich yeah yeah mm. so <coughs> a country like haiti who is in charge the drug lords mm. and that's what happens to countries where so you know these hustler buses you know the rich people that's that story should actually just really end mm. the super rich need to be in power because they have something to protect yes okay so that said I pack it there. Yes, we should be the brother's keeper. You think this money you're talking about going to IMF to get, I don't know which countries is coming to set up NGOs to help Kenya. You don't think they have their own poor people there? Mm -hmm. Go to America, you'll see the kind of poverty you've never oh, yeah. ever seen. Yeah. They are really, really poor. But there comes a time when you have to show international leadership. Mm -hmm. So why should we not show leadership? Yeah. Haiti... A lot of those people are African descendants. Mm. So why not? We can, man we can afford, in terms of take a few, show sometimes about just showing that leadership. The symbol of it. Uh, the symbol of it. Yes. And just take some. Okay. So that you get respected. Yes. See you, what do you think? Mm. <laughs> Let me <laughs> just... International cooperation. You know, first of all, I think this government should get serious. Ouch. <laughs> they just should, they should get serious. We have serious problems to deal mm. with. We have banditry to deal with. Mm -hmm. We have accidents on the road. Mm. We have people who are driving badly on our traffic and all this. We have enough problems and we don't have money. We are broke. Mm. You cannot take your policemen out there yeah. and you can't even feed your people. You can't pay your salaries here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's time to forget the optics mm. and deal uh -huh. with the reality. Okay. I think uh, my friend uh, Mutua is a very good friend of mine. Yeah. I think he sometimes he shoots <laughs> from his mouth without realizing without that thinking properly. it's, it's, it's mm. just nonsense to mm. say you are sending police there. If mm. it is Congo, we are mm. sending our, our army to Congo. That is more understandable because we have trading uh, we are doing with Congo, the partnerships. Yes. We are trying to make the, the, the region stable. Yeah. Mm. But Haiti... <laughs> How? How now? Maybe you're sending, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he was thinking Madness. about the next episode of Cobra Squad. It is yeah. Cobra Squad. <laughs> and, you're, and you're sending an unafraid, hungry policeman to Haiti? Surely. With and talk, and talking barrier. about ridiculous things, maybe Dr. C, that's a good time to bring it up. Yeah, so topic. now just coming back, <laughs> coming back on, you know, Cobra Squad. Uh, entertainment. Real Houses of Nairobi, yes. Entertainment, Showmax, Netflix. 
Yeah, so th uh, there is a new show on African, yes. the Egyptian ancestry and, and all that. And there's a lot of, uh, th there's a lot of debate going on there. Mm. So I think I will start with my personal views because I have yes. very strong personal views. Okay. That number one, the world has changed. Mm. Yeah. And what is wrong? Yes, Cleopatra <coughs> is true. He was from the Ptolemy uh, heritage, mm. which everybody knows was Greek. Mm. Yeah. So in a way, yes, Cleopatra was actually not African. But that said, Egypt was very African. Africans build the pyramids. Yes. What people, what a lot of people and uh, a lot of Africans need to study history we, because we need to own it. Algebra, which everybody says was from Arab, mm. because Arabs gave algebra to the world, mathematics. Okay, mm -hmm. do you know it actually originated from Africa, from the Maktaba in Mali? Yeah, almost all it of our originally came. Our the whole came education, Africa, Africa yeah. has given so much to the world, mm -hmm. including building those pyramids. Yeah, that it is a, a lot of Egypt was African, mm -hmm. and up, even up to date, a lot of Egyptians don't want to identify as Africans. Mm -hmm. This is unacceptable. I feel like... We need um, to go back and conquer Africa. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Yeah. Even up there. <laughs> I feel like, in, in truth, <sighs> Egypt has had a very deep, <laughs> long-seated history of struggling with race. As in, like, you see, even from the, the pyramids and everything, having, not the pyramids, <laughs> but the sphinxes and stuff, having their noses um, shot off. It's not new that that conversation and that debate in northern africa generally i know a lot of northern africans feel like us well we're part of the arab world we're not africans and they don't like being associated so i understand that it's very deep-seated the same way for african americans slave trade and is very deep deep-seated their race is very deep deep-seated and maybe a way it's not for us so much maybe for us it's more tribes and things like that so i understand the history behind it but for me as an actor I just feel like at a certain point, see, people had no problem with white people doing blackface way back when. Yes. There's a lot of shows like Bridgerton <laughs> where we have people who are not historically of that race playing those roles. I just feel like when we're, doing, when we're talking about entertainment, I feel like we're at a point where Silazima, as in like Silazima, it does, even if fine, historically she was Greek, if you find an amazing actor, look at, it's the same conversation people are having about Little Mermaid right now. Because you have, um, what's I'm her black. name, not Chloe Bailey, Haley Bailey, who's black, Halle Bailey, who's black, she's playing Little Mermaid, people are in, up in uproar about it. But I, I feel like at this point, if you've got a really good actor who can really put across the character, I don't think it matters about race. Do you want, as, as my other person in the entertainment industry, you want you to know, give us our I final totally, words about that? I totally agree with you. And uh, with the example of Little Mermaid, it yeah. did so much to the black community. There was a lot of excitement that came with uh, watching a black you know, even the kids, because yes. uh, there was the singing and everything going on, the kids could relate. So I, I'm just thinking out loud, uh, what's the worst that can happen when we have a black actor who, could, who ought to have been white? It's not, it's I didn't not the see end like of the world. The, I didn't see the argument. I, I was reading those articles and I'm thinking, so now? Yeah, <laughs> what's the big deal? What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. I think as a, as, as a, as yeah, a... Give us our final words on it, yeah. yeah as a leading yeah, black actor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a leading black actor in the world, I think it's time for the world to recognize that we have arrived on the international platform, whether they like it or not. And we have been delayed, by the way. Mm. We have been delayed. Not that we are not equal to the task. We were, we were equal ages ago, we, but now we have arrived. We are, telling our, we are telling our own stories in our own way. Mm. And I thank God for Netflix. Netflix have come and they have just destabilized the market, whereby... They have removed Hollywood from where it is, or Hollywood has remained where it is, but with, with the kind of uh, amazing budgets, high quality productions, uh, mm. they've come up with across the world, and now in Africa, we are able to tell our stories on the highest platform okay. ever. Look at what we did uh, you know, you know, uh, yeah. with Country Queen. Yeah. Country Queen competed global. Country Queen was number three in US for almost a month. 
country queen down here and local, she was local, the lead actor. and she was the lead actor mm -hmm. oh, oh i was a co-lead by the way <laughs> 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 but see, oh, it begs the question if we're saying if we're saying that um black actors should be able to play white roles are we also opening pandora's box of where we're going to start getting white actors playing black roles and saying don't complain they've been doing it the they've way. been doing it and but it now we say it's not acceptable so are we if, can Listen. we can we do play both sides of that when the white man came he brought us what the bible and the gun and the gun mm. And they told us that this is our system of education and all this and all this. Mm. It is not wrong for us to play their roles. But I'll go back to Egypt, first of all. I like, I love Real Egypt. Quick, yes. I love Egypt. I know, I love it too, yeah. The, first of all, Egypt was black. It was known as Lower Kemet. The first pharaoh was black. Mm -hmm. The first pharaoh was called Menya. In the books, they spell it Mene. Wrong. It's Menya. He was a black man, and mm. I can refer people to go and read Czech Antadiop, one of the guys who've written those books. Those Cleopatras and all, they came and picked the African culture. It is not wrong to pick a black woman to play that role. Because even the Arabs there, yes. even all those people, the culture they used, the pharaoh was yes. a black man. Yeah. Even they used his name. So my argument has always been, let black people thrive because they are the people who found all that culture there. The culture yes. in Egypt is not Arab. It's yeah, actually black, it's black culture. Okay. So why are we trying to say that we can't play black? Okay. Dr. C, give us our last words. So the last word, yeah. I want to talk as a producer. Okay. Okay? And since we have, we are on a national platform, mm. in the Bridgerton, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, those roles, there were Africans who were in those leading... Yes, in, 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 yeah. Yeah, they were in royalty and yes. whatever. So that said, as a producer, sometimes you want to look at, when you're producing a show and you want to take it to market and to a platform like Netflix or whether it's um, Showmax, you want to look at viewership. So sometimes you may replace certain roles and be inclusive as possible because the world is changing. There's no yeah. way you're going to produce a show and you've made certain people feel not included. Mm. So I suppose also the producer was looking at that, but also honoring what you've said is so of, of Egypt. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Honoring the history, being true to the history, mm. but also looking at the inclusivity. Yeah. Such that if this show, the other day I saw Netflix invested, I don't know how many billions in Korea, because they see a lot of their viewership is actually coming from there. They, a lot of money. It made international headlines. Yeah. So now you want to be sure you're getting viewers from everywhere and you want to be inclusive. Okay, so, and I so suppose this is what the producer was also looking at. A business Africa decision. is a force. Yes. We are viewing... Yeah. Uh, these, uh, this platform okay. in a way, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Edward, do you want to take a step break? Yes, we are going to take a short break and we'll be That's back with more mesmerizing uh, conversations. Uh, don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the realest show. Let's be real, and uh, we are here with more compelling and more uh, amazing stories. And just let's dig in, guys. There's a topic that's really hey, close to my up. yeah yeah. I'm I'm moving up. <laughs> this topic is very close to my heart, whereby men, as the leaders of their home, take care of their children. First of all, you go get a girl who you think you can live with. You have children. You set up a family. We are busy working because we are the breadwinners, according to Africa. You raise kids, take them through primary, secondary. You are there emotionally, you are there psychologically. You, you are a friend to your children. And then they go to the world and they make it big or they make it small, however, but they are successful. When it comes to, uh, you know, time for, because the cycle goes the way it goes. Mm. Children now begin to take care of their parents, even if you don't need it per se. But you want your children to be there for you also, emotionally, psychologically, and just be present in old age, that is. Mm. But here in Africa, I think, we have a situation where men are getting old lonely and they are dying out of depression. You know, it, it, it's crazy. Children make it in the world. 
and the only person they remember is mommy because mommy was there when i was there out there getting the bread and the butter i wasn't there maybe per se with, with regard to time but i did it i did it when i could but because of the advantage of motherhood let me just call it that the advantage of being a mom they and perhaps along the way also some of them have been you know twisted in their mind they think the mom i send you money you're done paying school fees you're done buying everything so ev everything is being done by mom however i'm the one who's providing when it comes to time when the kids can take care of their parents, it's only mom who, mom who is being taken care of. So now we have people who, we're in the village, we're both old, money is being sent to mommy to take care of the household. So, so, so now reverse, use, power has been usurped. It's mom who is being taken care of. It's mom who is traveling to America, Toronto, I don't know where, to go and see the, uh, the kids who are giving birth, I don't know, all, all over the place. She's, she's, she's become a globetrotter well pocketed and oiled by her kids who are sending a pittance okay, to the dad. Can we say can, can, can defend? Wait, no, 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 let me finish. Let me finish because I'm a dad in this case. Okay. And, I, and I would hate for this to happen no, to me. Finish. What is happening here is very immoral and is, and is, and is and, 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 I know Dr. C your difference. Wow. <laughs> But is this justifiable, guys, honestly? Yes, I think it's justifiable. Listen, uh, and, and you, I think you, you said it very nicely. It is a, a benefit of motherhood. That mothers are generally the primary caretakers of the kids. And so we bond. We bond with our moms. Hey, we started from how many months with our moms like this inside of them? So I feel like there's, there's a special bond between a mother and a child. As, as, and then also, even now, but it's always been that way, with the breakdown of marriages a lot, the kids are always left with the mom. The mom is the parent who has been there for them, thick and thin, always present. And that's and it means a lot. So when, when the mom is old, that's the person you have the bond with. Plus, I also do think, and I think a lot of people would agree, in a household, who do you trust the most with money? You trust the woman. Because the woman is the one, you give her money and she'll sort every single person out. But the man, he might just keep it for himself. And we see that happen a lot. Men will make money, but they're, they're drunks, whatever. They don't care about the household. But women always care about everyone in the household. And that, that I find that they're better caretakers. So if I'm going to give money, I'd rather trust my mom with it. Because I know she'll, she'll be fair and she'll take care of everyone. That's why. So your mom will give your dad the money? Hmm? No, she'll pay for whatever he needs. What does he, what does he need the money? <laughs> so I, 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 let me, Sorry, I think I yes, want to... Dr. C. Yes. I think we are having two conversations okay. here. The first conversation is that uh, I refer to the Kikuyu community, mm. this one I know, is that um, I have seen a lot of women, once the children are through with school and all that, all of them are being shipped to America. Mm. They is, uh, by the way, it's a big problem of pandemic level mm. in that community. Mm. The women are going to America, when they reach America, it said that okay, maybe they are going to look after the children, mm -hmm. and then when they reach there, to look after the children, and then they get mm -hmm. like a job somewhere before they knew it. They meet somebody, they get married, and these men remain alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the saying is, I yes. want to buy my mom a house. It's never I want to buy my dad a house. Yeah. yeah, so you find the men are remaining and they become lonely. The women go, and, and that's a big problem. Uh, I don't have a solution for them. But the second <laughs> thing we are discussing, yes. we are actually talking about retirement. Ah, yes. This is what we are talking about, retirement. Mm. Because in other communities, when you even look at the West, when yeah. you look at the communities are changing. And this, by the way, we shouldn't even just talk about the men only, even the women. Mm. is the fact that the men become lonely because they, they are not good at making networks. The women are making the networks mm -hmm. and therefore they can stay. Yeah. But the men need to think, mm. how are they retiring? Are you going to retire with your other men, the one you've been going to the sports club with, yes. eating your machoma with? So now, it, this presents, if you ask me, a business opportunity. Mm. Is there somebody building retirement homes where oh, these men, men can go? And actually, yeah, because it's not going away. You're, you're retiring and you're going to the village where you never lived. Yes. Yeah? Like now, uh, you, CEO, if you retire and you have not planned yourself here, now for, I'm not saying you will, but see the glorious career you're having right now. Yes. You retire, you want to go to the village. You know nobody. Yeah. Yeah? You, now you're going yeah. to, your, to your home there. It's not going to work. So we need to start planning such that we are retiring in homes where the next door 
yeah your next door next yeah. door yeah you, your friend is there there is a super spot showing there there's a bar there there's a doctor there mm. and you live a life that's what it's a business opportunity for me that's what yeah. i'm saying ceo what do you think i think this is a multifaceted problem okay. because one the kids uh who come from a, a stable family mm. might be different from kids who come from single mothers, single families, mothers yes. and all that because probably your father was not up, was not present yeah so when your father was not present you have nothing an example of diamond and the mother mm. diamond does not care about his father mm. but the, this problem has manifested even in families where they are very stable mm. the man and the woman has lived together for a very long mm. time because the mothers always tell their kids that you know when you give your father money he will drink or give me more more money than than your father yeah some of us what we do is that what i used to do when my mother was alive is that i'll give you the same amount of money as i give my dad okay and i will not disclose what i have given anyone were they living together yes because so one them, okay. if you give your mother money and you say i've given my father 20000 your mother will budget for that 20000 yes and, yeah 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 and, and, as she mm -hmm. should and yes and then she her she has another 20000 mm. so she will budget and say oh we'll pay 20000 and see you so we have 40000 we have, we have 40000 <laughs> now hers becomes hers i think as a, no, as as men i think in this generation going forward when you're going to retire make sure you have your own money don't expect your kids to give you money as a mm. man because okay. if you depend on your kids They'll give their mother the money, and you'll be frustrated, you'll be depressed. Mm. When you're saving, make sure that you have another account where you have your money, your money. for use. That okay. when you retire, when you go home, you do not have to bother anyone. Okay, so Edward, he's saying that men don't re rely on children. So do you mm. think the problem is, yeah, men, you need to stop relying? Or is the problem the children? Um, children I don't need think to start it's... it's their okay, that's a caution to men not to rely on their children. Mm. But I remember in the olden days... Uh, men used to want to have a lot of children so that they can take care of them that mm. used to be the case right like okay families used to mm. have yes. a lot of kids so that they would take care of them when they get old mm. and in this question of loneliness when uh, someone gets old it's it's about uh how cultured they were uh if you if you saw your dad take care of his dad and you saw the optics and you were present mm it would be ingrained in you to take care of your dad the same way. Mm. Uh, when you don't have a close relationship or you did not see that, then even in your mind, it does not occur to you to do because it. you do not, you cannot relate with that. Mm. And another thing is a lot of times we have a lot of parents taking care of, like a parent who has like 14 kids, all of them are taken care of, school fees paid and everything. but. It, it it gets to a moment where you wonder when 14 kids cannot take care of two parents at mm. their old age. Mm. It's it's What's it's really happening? it's a matter of either one selfishness, two you forget where you're from, and uh, when the parents get old, this is what happens. Um, their movement is limited. Uh, they cannot do the things that they used to. They have pre-existing conditions, uh, so probably what they would do is sit, watch TV, or, okay. and they have a lot to think about. Mm. So when that happens, you're not communicating with them, you're not showing up uh, <laughs> during uh, events or festivities. It really gets to their mind. And um, I'm talking like this because we have um, this going on like with parents mm. uh, back at home where mom goes like, oh, you need to talk your, to your dad, you need to, you know, right now he's feeling like this. And um, at times we cannot help it because of either one, um, occupational hazards, mm. uh, you're not present, present, but also when you're not present, phone calls really do uh, help mm. so that they don't feel like they are alone. But it is very important what CEO said, because when you lose your parent is when you will realize mm. you know those who probably have lost some parent or two mm. uh, do not fathom like how can you not <laughs> be yeah. there with your yeah. parent mm. or talk to your parent right now because mm. there's one day you will not see them to cherish them while they're still yeah. here my, my, my very quickly yes yes mm. for men because it is it's really for men, men yes mm -hmm. 
sort of like comes natural. Mm -hmm. Two things. Men, number one, of course, uh, let's not reduce this thing to a money issue. Mm. Yeah. I intend to be a very wealthy old man. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be about money with my kids. I want a relationship mm. with my children. I yeah. want to call me, mm. to visit me. Mm -hmm. I want to visit them. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's now, that's going to be my occupation, as, you know, apart from other things. I want, to, I want to see my grandkids. Men have to create now. Now we are learning as men mm. who are now, uh, or both kids are growing up create a friendship and a relationship and that is equal to time with your kids yeah. otherwise yeah if you think it's it, it, it's about sending money you will rip that thing press down shake it together and yeah that's an important you're, you're, you're putting yeah. the Bible. going to be hmm. ah i'll throw money your way show yeah i want relationship yeah so let's create time let's True. create relationship let's create friendship with our kids that we may reap there for later on it's not about money all the mm. time okay um, and CEO, I think kind of talking about staying in the in the realm of men yes, and the loneliness yes. that they sometimes feel. Maybe you want to take us to our next topic, which yeah, is yeah. related. Uh, I think uh, recently there's a content creator called yeah. a Pluto. In fact, I was confusing with Plato. Plato. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering, Plato? Plato is depressed. <laughs> Plato, the, 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 uh, the, the philosopher. Mm. But you know, Plato also talked about mental illness in his one of... He's so talked about been mental. There, especially with men, yeah. He talked, yeah. He talked mm. about mind, heart, and soul. Yeah, that was his greatest quote. Mm. But this Pluto, this gentleman, says that he's feeling depressed. And then I, when I read about it, I realized that he had a, a tiff with uh, Andrew Kibe, who was saying you should do a DNA for your kid. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of stuff on the background there mm. that. Uh, this content creator, you know, when you when you start creating content, it is very, it is fun, it is interesting. Then you open a can of worms, and guys start dissecting you. <laughs> then they start asking be, yeah. you so many things. Yeah. They start telling you that nose doesn't look like yours. Oh, <laughs> that woman I saw with who you are not even your father is not your father. Then yes. you're like, ah, oh, that is not. Mm. The things come up. Then you start getting depressed. My, I, I think that this guy, when when he was getting this it's trendy you make money but you do not safeguard yourself sometimes mm. people don't know how to safeguard themselves but i don't know it's what do you take melbo when you talk about uh, you know kibe talking about dna that's an entire different issue uh, you know, uh, not issue is an entire completely yeah we can talk about that one yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, dna i keep saying if DNA in this country is done like a census, where we are told to sit in the house and we to be counted, if DNA is done that way, there will be a, a public outcry and it would come from women. Yes. <laughs> and men, men, men now would commit suicide, but anyway, that's, that's besides the point. I think for me, it brings up the fact that content creation, we are being seen to be, you know, pay setters and whatever, and we are, of course, on social media. Social media is a different world from the world we live in, and I keep telling yeah. people that. Don't look at social media. Don't, don't, don't judge me what you see on Instagram. Mm. That's an, a, a world on its own, and now here is a world on, its, on our own. This man, I think he's just going through a, a myriad of issues. And we don't know also if what uh, Kibe told him, <laughs> Kibe, Kibe, Kibe being Kibe, may have actually just hit a vulnerable spot oh, where yes. he even knows something about it because yeah. he he we know him to be rational and all those things maybe mm. maybe even knows about it mm. you mm. know so uh, when a man cries it's like for example when you i'll give this as i move on to uh, yeah. move on. when when you have um, an aquarium for example in your house and we, we all know an aquarium works with electricity and whatnot that's mm. how oxygen is supplied mm. you are fishing that aquarium if the electricity goes off and now there's no more oxygen coming through, the fish come to the top trying to get oxygen. Mm. And if you don't put it on or find a solution, will jump out. Yeah, that, you know, they, but, but they always cry for help. Mm. When a man says he's mentally not okay, I think we should overlook DNA and all those things and just get to know what's really going on because that's a cry for help, if, if, yeah. if you ask me. I think that's exactly what I was mm. going to say mm. as well. It's, it's hard enough right now for men to be able to say, I have a problem. Mm. And we know, as like the suicide rates are a, a lot higher for males than they are for, for women, men really suffer in silence. So I feel like if a man is suffering enough to come out and say, guys, I'm not okay, 
I think we should take that very seriously. Unfortunately, there is also the other point of, and this is a, a, the fault of a lot of content creators, especially in Kenya, they always do, they do things for the clouds. Yeah. So you and so know. now you get a situation where people are like, can I believe you? Are you is this for clouds or is this for real you. life? Which is another thing, content creators, please stop doing nonsense for clouds, honestly. Because now when you actually need help, people are there like, mm, what are you about to release? What do you need our help for? What do you, what do you think, Dr. C? Well, uh, I think maybe I'm going to talk about the causes of depression. Yeah, no, many people know, but I talk about it. So it could be the one that is organic, mm. the one that you're genetically predisposed mm. to being depressed. And uh, it's been start found that uh, there's something to do with the neurotransmitters in the brain. So a lot of the medicines will actually target the transmission of serotonin so that there's more of it being transmitted. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a whole topic, but it's genetic yeah. predisposition. Mm -hmm. And then there is the organic one, that the, the one that comes, not organic, the one that is, comes from out of the environment. Mm -hmm. Something major happens, and this thing can also lead you into depression. Yeah. So I suppose, like what you're saying, the content creators, uh, I'm telling you, this social media, maybe you're trying to compare yourself or you're defining yourself by what you're doing and maybe if that source is over or, it's or you're not getting enough praises, there's, it's a big problem all over the world, young people taking away even their lives because of they're not getting enough likes. You've seen increasingly in the world, the social media platforms are being put to accountability. Yeah, it like, affects yeah, it affects, it affects how you, 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 you feel. So, there's, so that cause, the external causes, so maybe you want to reduce your, your exposure or something like that, but there's a big, a big problem. Last year in September, um, a close neighbor actually buried uh, a son who just, mm. who just, uh, uh, like, they don't know what happened. Mm. They just took away their life. And at that time, you know, now we were listening. There were so many cases, like so many that a lot of young people had were just taking away their lives yeah. uh, because of these uh, mental health, like literally and attempts, so many. So I think so that we really, it has to be true. In fact, it was declared uh, uh, a national emergency yeah. by the president, then President Uhuru. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem we have. And when we have someone like the Pluto, yeah. I've heard of him even, I, even though I don't know what he yeah, does, yeah. but I have heard of him, mm. yeah? And I think so that we need to normalize talking about yeah. mental health. Yeah. And I, would, uh, I think it's a good thing he's talking about it. Let's make it normal. Let's treat mental health. Yeah. The way we talk about mental health is the same way we'll talk about malaria, the same way we'll talk about dialysis, okay. the same way we'll talk about anything else so yeah. that these people can get help. Okay, and on so a that lighter we don't note, stigmatize mm. yes, it. On, yeah. a, on a lighter note, I'm, I'm mm. going to move to our, our, our last topic, which you could say is, is safeguarding women's mental health. Um, uh, Joy Mudengi, what's her name? Oh, that's Joy Mudengi. That's, Mudengi. that's yeah. what it is. She recently um, put out a statement saying that women, don't check your, your man's phone. Why are, you, why are you bringing problems for yourself? Kwanzaa, if he's, if he's left it there and locked, just go lock it. Don't, don't look at it. Help your mental health as women. What do you think about <laughs> that? Should women just like don't don't put yourself in trouble? Don't read. You'll find what you want to find. Yeah, you will don't definitely find what you need to want to find. Um, it's good for one's phone to be their personal business because um, I feel like uh, <laughs> by the time you're checking someone's phone, it means that there's not. There's trust, already problems, right? Yeah. Uh, you're already thinking uh, this person is doing something behind my back. Why would you need to check your partner's phone if you trust them? Mm. Or would you appreciate it if your partner checked your phone? I wouldn't care. Me, my phone is there. I'll give you my code. I have no oh, problem. Yeah. But but I, but in the same uh, in the same vein, <laughs> if they did check, if they checked my phone, I would ask, Connie, what's the problem? Where, where's the trust mm -hmm. loss that you feel the need to check my phone? Mm -hmm. But if you want to check, check. Can they just tell me? I want to check. Yeah, because more check, often than not, check. if they they will check your phone, they will not check your phone in your presence. 
they'll do it when you're not there. But it's okay. You take That's a bathroom check, break. Uh, there, you know, you understand. It. So yeah. I feel like it's it's more a trust issue than it is like um, an issue that probably one partner has that yeah. it's a trust issue. But uh, if you want to really have uh, transparency and trust going on in a yeah. relationship, then if you feel like you need to ask something, you'd yes, rather yes. ask yeah. than you know start okay. crying because when your partner notices that you do not trust them mm. then they you are giving them an excuse to actually cheat if they're not cheating okay hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know who to ask you, know, to ask you know. <laughs> <laughs> two things first yeah. um yes. phones have been the highest cause of divorces in this country absolutely in the world in the world yeah and kenya is even worse uh -huh. and it's because i'll bring something uh, we call language and culture mm -hmm. because today i might call dr c i can text and say hi sweetie how are you but there's the no relation like, no it's yeah. a, text. a tone in a text no, in a text your wife might read a different tone to yes you. so like, I? the language yeah when it appears on phone when she comes and snoops on my phone and i've called her sweetheart or darling there's a problem now it will be a problem <laughs> so she will not know whether this darling, what does it mean? But it's the way people call each other. Language has really progressed from where it was meant to be. Mm. You don't call people darling. Call you understand? People. So, you see, now, they say, well, why are you calling her darling? Yeah. Why are you calling her sweetheart? <laughs> why are you calling... You see, you understand? Yeah. But these things, it's just language. So I think that the best thing, because if you know you'll text, yeah. and it does, you'll have a discussion about it, and you've texted someone, and you finished, hey dear, mm. could you please do? So the wife or your husband will say, hey dear, mm. why didn't you say hi Edwin or Edward? Yes. Or, yes. yes. No, it's uh -huh. So hmm. leave the phone alone. Mm. Dr. C, do you agree? Uh, you are a no. married woman. I what do you I, absolutely. You know the guilty are always afraid. But that said, yes. that said, mm. <laughs> one of the things actually to keep the... You know, the mystery in your relationship yeah. and all that. Actually, uh, even in the some ages, yeah, the men never used to sleep with the women. Mm -hmm. There was that personal space you would have, yeah? Mm. Even within the African setup. Yes. The man would have his, yeah. his, his there. Ha house there and he yes. would go to the house where he wanted to go. Mm. So we are normalizing this thing of we are sharing the bed. Mm every day mm -hmm. yeah but i've seen some of some people build homes such that uh the man has his own bathroom yes. he's grooming he's doing his own things there and the lady has her own space she's doing her own things there that way you maintain that mm -hmm. that personal the mystery the mm -hmm. word and it keeps the relationship going mm -hmm. so so there's that space where people need to feel they've not lost themselves. The I recently yeah. read an article, a lady in the UK who said, you know what, she actually was so fed up of her marriage in terms of she felt she had lost who she was. Mm. She went and rented a different apartment for herself where she would just go and listen to her music, do her things, be just who she wanted to be. Mm. So in a relationship, I'm not talking about cheating. I'm just talking about having your own space. This, the essence of you're in a relationship, yes, but you're not losing yourself. Whether you're a mother, you're a father, you feel that you can yeah. keep yourself. And I think so that checking people's phones, mm. I just think because uh, me and my husband, we share phones, whatever. We, we have nothing to hide. Mm. But some people may feel their personal space so embedded yes. that it can really cause. Uh, a rift in the relationship, even if there's no cheating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Mel Melvin, the, would it cause a rift in your relationship if she was checking your phone? Or would you check your wife's phone? First of all, I want to congratulate Joy. I think she's <laughs> a woman who has got great wisdom. <laughs> That's your problem. Wisdom yes. is lacking nowadays. <laughs> well, Explain. Very, very many women are walking around with no wisdom. Don't check your... My, look, so will I, you not check also I, your woman's I completely phone? agree with Dr. C with regard to, I don't want to lose myself. I want to have some sort of mystery around me. Mm. In fact, I will do the same. In my next relationship, I will have, uh, I'd, I'd rather have my bedroom, your bedroom, to maintain some decorum. Some, like even now, my kids don't come to my room. Mm. 
when they keep coming, rrr, I just say, hey guys, you know, and, and they know they don't come to me all the time mm. because I want to maintain. I'm, I'm a father to them, yes, but mm. but I, I'm also Melvin and Lucy, I'm an actor. Why are you checking your partner's phone? So if you see your, your partner they, texting at 8 p.m., you should not ask any questions. That yeah, you text check. no. Yeah. Even you as a man. I don't want stress. That is so strange. You don't men, men texting at 10. The only, yeah, yeah, 10. Midnight. The, the only reason I, the only reason I will check for me in my insecurity, the only reason I will check your phone as my woman is not because I'm checking for texts of men and whatnot. You don't check my Mpesa. I want to check your Mpesa <laughs> and your Mpesa <laughs> transactions. Yeah, <laughs> you, you guys are busy investing in land. Comes back to come, comes back to have your have your room. Ha, uh, and, yeah, and, have uh, my money. Have your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I will check your phone for the money trail. <laughs> you are checking my phone for high the women's trail. In the art, especially in the arts, media, entertainment. Hi, darling. Hey, babe. Hey, what's ah, up? What not? That, 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 yeah, that runs through all. Of, you, you you know, it's language. Ati, babe. My, yes. My wife, hey, babe. My, my wife yes. could be your friend, ah, and she that. knows me and you are just friends. And yeah. you told me, hey, 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 love. Like, she keeps test, uh, yeah, uh, hey, love. text. Uh, yeah, hey, love. Yeah. You keep you keep texting me. Hey, lover. I've never in my life. <laughs> 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 boundaries. I even boundaries. Read the, the messages that even me and you share, if, yeah. if one of our partners looked at them, they'd be like, Yeah, it's actually nothing. Yeah, yeah, That's language. language. Yeah. Let, let's have some boundaries, guys, please. Yeah. Okay. Just too much. So boundaries and maintain your mental yes. health by not even asking questions. Don't. I think that's mm. a great place to, to end our conversation today. Oh, we started off really heavy, but at oh. least we finished off light. Um, uh, yeah, I want to say a huge thank you to Samantha Wines. I really enjoyed this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. And my water, too. Yeah. And the water, too. <laughs> and the water, too. Um, yeah. Samantha Wines. This one is drinking wine and preaching Remember water. Remember, you guys, you can, get, you can get Samantha Wines everywhere wines are sold. Uh, we're entering, oh, by the time you guys see this, we're finishing our long weekend. So just stock up, have a bottle of wine or two, even for the next weekend. Um, and we want to say a huge thank you to Thailand Carpet. Um, I really liked our sets today. I love this color. Mm. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have really enjoyed. Give us feedback. What are you guys' opinions on the topics that we've covered? And we will see you again next week on Let's Be Real. See you.